Well, I can't tell you how many times in the past month I've gotten the question, what happened to your old town? What's what's going on with your old town? How come you're using the Hobie so much? Where is it? Is it coming back? Well, today, it's officially back. And yeah, I had a few issues with it. I'll tell you more about it when we get to get on the water. It actually wasn't anything too major. It just took a long time to get everything back up and running. And uh, yeah, I wanna get out there fishing real quick. So let's get out there and I'll talk more about it. Everything is working smoothly. I haven't had to pedal one bit. This motor is a wonderful thing and we're finally fishing. You know, I was thinking the other day, I haven't caught a halibut over three months. It's crazy. Normally I, I love fish for halibut. I haven't, it's just because of the salmon really that I haven't had done any halibut fishing. Not only has it been three months, it's been like three months of like prime summer halibut fishing months. So. I'm happy to get back out here. Hopefully we can get one today. We're going to be doing some commercial fishing out here on the San Francisco Bay. Just dropped my first frozen herring down. I'm going to be trolling this basically this way. I'm also meeting up with a couple of buddies out here. Well, one buddy who you'll see a bit here. But anyways, we're halibut fishing. It's been too long. All right, I got this one down. But anyways, it's all working now trolling I got one rod in I'm gonna put one more down I don't really know how the halibut bite's been like I said it's been so high it's not only I haven't caught one in three months I also haven't fished for him in three months so um, yeah I have no idea how the bite's gonna be it could be lightning quick it could be red hot or it could be totally dead we're gonna find out today all right I got both rods in now I could do more but I only brought two today and once again the only reason I'm able to run two in the San Francisco Bay is because I have a commercial fishing license. So normal sport fishing is limited to run one rod per person uh, in the bay. I always feel like I should mention that just to avoid any confusion. And then I'm also running a little test. So on this rod, I'm just running straight frozen herring. And on this rod, I have a flasher in front of my frozen There's one of the triangle spinning flash here we'll show you later. Hopefully you can catch something on both, maybe one or the other. It personally, I'm on the side where I don't think the flasher really matters too much, but the nice thing about using two rods is I can test different stuff. So we're going to directly compare the two right now. Flasher on this one, no flasher on this one. We'll see which one outperforms the other. So back to the kayak. I know everyone's been wondering what's going on with the kayak. I had four pretty minor issues with the kayak, but four issues nonetheless that were kind of putting the kayak out of commission. The first two were very simple fixes. One was a little bracket right here on the seat, and the second was this rod holder back here. This is the rod holder that's flush with the uh, kayak. It's, it comes with the kayak, it's bolted in and everything. Those two were very simple fixes. Literally, probably took me less than 60 seconds to fix. It's just unscrewing one, popping in the new one, and then screwing in that one in. So those were very simple. I just had to wait. I don't know, a week or two for the parts. And then after that, I realized the kayak still wasn't working. I couldn't get the motor to start for some reason. So I wasn't really sure what was going on there. I had to run a few tests. Um, and then I finally figured out that it was a socket or a, an outlet up here in the front that the motor plugs into that I had to replace. So that one was a little bit more complicated just because there's some wiring involved, some electrical involved, but still I'm no, you know, electrician or anything and I was still able to fix it. Uh, I'd say that probably took me 15 minutes or so. And then finally, after that happened, then I realized that my battery wasn't working. So that was unfortunate, but luckily the battery was under warranty. So I had to, I was able to ship it in. They sent me a new one to replace the battery. Um, and I had to it. So that one probably took the longest just because I had to ship the old battery in. They had to make sure it was under warranty, you know, whatever. And then they shipped me a new one back. And I had some shipping issues where they shipped to the wrong address and uh, separate. But anyways, that's why it took so long. I had, those are the four basic issues that I had. None were like super labor intensive. It just took a lot of time to ship stuff back and forth, to figure out what the issue was and all stuff like that. So anyways, that's where we're standing out. Now I feel like I have a new pack almost. All the wiring is new. I got a new battery. So needless to say, I mean, you saw how many fish I put on the Outback in the last couple months. That is an awesome kayak as well. But I'm excited to say that this is 
hopefully gonna be back in action. This is gonna be my basically my main kayak moving forward. This is just so nice, it's so easy to use. You know, you see I'm trolling, everything's down, and I'm not putting in any work basically. Um, I can steer with my feet here, I keep my hands free, I can do any not tying, camera adjusting, whatever I need to. I don't have to worry about pedaling. People always ask me all the time, you know, which kayak do they recommend? Do I recommend? Do I recommend getting an Outback or the Old Town or whatever? Different kayaks that are out there. And I always tell people, like, it really, like, for me personally, I like both. The Outback is a little bit nicer for me, but for you, it could be totally different. It really depends on your style of fishing, where you're going to be fishing, how you're going to be transporting your kayak, just your, like, physical capabilities in general. Just a, a bunch of different factors. So I tell people it really just depends what kayak fits you best. Anyway, enough talking. Looking for a halibut here. I haven't had any bites yet. I'm kind of surprised. I feel like I went through a good area there. And didn't even get a tap as far as I saw. So let's focus up. Let's get us a halibut. All right. Well, no luck so far. I worked my way out deep, and now I'm going to start working my way back in shallow. I've got to figure out these fish because I haven't been here in so long. I'm just trying to put the pieces of the puzzle together. Just brought my lines up to check them. It's always good to check your lines every, you know, so often just to make sure that you haven't snagged up on any, you know, kelp or something down at the bottom that's messing up the action of your bait. Um, so I always like to periodically check them, I'd say at least every half an hour. There's fish, fish, fish. Got one. Pretty sure it's a halibut. Probably a little shaker. Yeah, a little shaker. Oh, he swallowed that. That's the target species. Not the size that we're looking for, but it's a start. White on one side, brown on the other. Just a little shaker. That's one point for no flasher. Straight bait. Other rod, other rod. So this is the one with the flasher. I think it's a keeper. I feel like this is probably another shaker. A little bit bigger. Maybe. Yeah, a little bit bigger. Release. Man, look at that. He shredded that bait up. Oh, that looks like a bigger one. All right, this one I think is a bigger one. This one has a chance to be a keeper. Oh, yeah. That must have been a good little spot there. I'm about to go back to that one. Oh, no. Oh. Swimming up for a second. Wow. Fish has some personality. He was swimming up for a second. I thought he lost him and then he went on a good run there. He's a good fish. that big. I hooked him. Dang it. I thought that one was bigger. Well, getting there. A little bit bigger. Not quite deeper though, pretty sure. So what happened on this one is 
So we're using two hooks, right? There's a, a treble on the back and then a single hook in the front. Obviously ate the bait, and that treble went in the mouth, and then the second hook swung back around and got it right on the side there. So that's why it felt a lot heavier than it was. It was kind of coming up like a parachute. We're working our way up. First one was probably 12, next one maybe 13, 14. This was probably close to 20 inches. Quick little measure here. I don't think he's gonna make it, but just check. Yeah, 21. There you go. All right, let's look for a keeper next. All right, so getting everything set up back here again. Like I've said it many times before with halibut, they're not a schooling fish like a like a salmon or a striped bass, something like that. But they will group up together. And I think what happened right there when I hit that double is I hit a little group of them. So um, most likely it's not just a group of two, it's probably a group of many, many more. So I'm gonna try to circle back around and hit that same little area. And if we're lucky enough, maybe there's another one there waiting. And if we're lucky, even luckier, maybe you'll be a keeper. Oh, and also it's now two to one. The flasher rod tied it up for a brief second there, but then the no flasher hooked up right after that to take another two to one lead. So we'll see how this pans out. Well, I circled back around where that little spot was where I got those two hookups back to back, boom, boom. Nothing, didn't find anything else, but uh, just a quick mission today. I'm sure if I worked it a little bit harder, I probably could have found a few more fish, maybe shakers, maybe keeper if I'm lucky, but I really just wanted to get out here really quick and test everything out, make sure the motor's working, battery's working, everything's working, and it seems like all systems are go. So my next journey will be out on the open ocean targeting something. I'm not sure what yet, maybe salmon, halibut, link cod, whatever it is. That will be my next mission, but today, just like a test run, and we're good to go. But one more thing before we finish up this video, I did mention at the beginning of the video that I was meeting a buddy out here and I crossed paths with him at one point today, but I think it was too quick. You probably didn't even get to see him at all. So we're going to meet him back at the boat ramp and I'll show you guys what I'm talking about. All right, so this is the guy that I was out here fishing with today. One of his clients caught a nice keeper, unfortunately. 30 inches. 30? Yeah. Oh, that's really nice. Okay. They caught a really nice one. None for us, but he did well. But the reason I want to get him on the camera is he does kayak guiding. So a lot of people ask me all the time, do I do guided trips on the kayak? Unfortunately, I do not. But if you want to take a guided trip, this is the guy you need to hit up. Yeah, guys, just message me on Instagram, nickfish007, or I have a website, norcalkayakadventures.com. Right on. So you don't even need a kayak, right? Fishing gear, nothing. You just need to bring yourself. He's got all the gear yep. to put you on some fish. He'll take care of you. If you want to take a trip on the old town, you literally could take it with him, so. Yeah, so guys, I have a bunch of different kayaks. I have Hobie kayaks as well as Old Town kayaks. If you guys are interested in maybe, if you guys are deciding on whether you want a Hobie or an Old Town, this is a good place to go test it out. For sure. Um, yeah, you could literally test, like, I mean, you could test drive a kayak at some kayak places, but you're actually going to get to take it out and fish on it and everything. So you, this is like a true, true test drive. If you have your own kayaks, I do just straight guiding as well. If you guys want to get a group together and all go out, we can do that. Or if you don't want to take out your kayak, I could bring a kayak for you as well. Both good setups. He's the man, Nick Fish. 007 on Instagram. Thanks, or Nick guys. Fish on it's, or uh, Nick Fish on uh, YouTube. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Adam. Yeah, so, anyways, I know you guys ask me all the time about guided trips. He's the guy you need to have, but I'm sure you've seen him in playing my videos if you watch this or if you follow the channel. So, anyways, that's gonna wrap it up. Another day out on the water. Back to Old Town. It's back up and running. Look forward to more videos. On Team the Old, old Town. town. <laughs> He's got Old Town, too. I'll leave us link your information linked in the description if you you guys want to hit him up. So anyways, Nick Fish, guided trips. We'll see you guys out on the water. Thank you, Adam. Thanks for watching.